Hi, a very good morning to all of you. Today we are going to discuss uh, the case note of uh, Mrs. Angelina Jolly. And uh, the letter we are going to write is to a general surgeon. That's Peter Frederick. Bluewell Hospital for further treatment of the patient. Now let us go in detail. So you are writing to a surgeon and you are writing to a surgeon in a different hospital for further treatment of the patient. So it is clear that it is not carried out in your hospital. This doctor is from a different hospital and his profession is designation is general surgeon so this is what and you are requesting further treatment for mrs jolly so that's what we have understood from the task we are not going to do the second task we are going to do the first task let us go further and you are a charge nurse in royal perth hospital uk so your hospital is different and your address is hospital is different. So our name is of the patient is Angelina Jolly. She's 55. And you have relevant social history here, married and lives with husband. Now you have admission date and discharge date here. And we have hemorrhagic tonsillitis as diagnosis and rheumatoid arthritis also she has uh, as uh, uh, her diagnosis. Now, her present condition is clear. Now, as a medical history, she has DM, hyperlipidemia, and hypothyroidism, and she is taking uh, insulin and levothyroxine respectively for these diseases. And uh, how she was presented to the hospital, she has a lot of complaints here. And these complaints are outlined here. One is arthritis related problem that is severe joint pain all over the body. The second one is tonsillitis related problem that is extremely throat pain, extreme throat pain. So we have infection related problems like headache, fever, weakness, dysphagia, cough with expectoration. And we have a uh, mild breathing due to chest congestion and uh, <clears throat> something else we do have that is lack of appetite and constipation. So have a lot of complaints, presenting complaints are many. Now, um, we, we have the social history and I think that as we are writing to the general surgeon. This particular data is not that much significant here. So just go ahead and go with the, the habits. You have the habits as she is a chain smoker and uh, occasional alcoholic. So this is what we can see here. Now, when, we sh when she came, you can see the vitals were remarkable. You have a um, hyperpyrexia, we have hypertension, and we have a increased pulse rate, all these things, and we have a BMI of 35. Okay, so this is obese, the patient is obese. Now we have um, the objective information like enlarged tonsils, red eyes, coated tongue, the patient also reported that she has bloody taste while swallowing saliva. So now we have an increased air so tighter, WBZ and ESR2 as the lab reports. All these things are important here. You have to inform the surgeon what treatment you have given. So this becomes relevant here. And how the prognosis are, her prognosis was recorded uh, somewhere uh, not satisfactory to what was expected. Even though we have uh, pain relief, we have problems like dysphagia, 
then uh, we have um, uh, problems, other problems persist. So um, we have uh, to go with tonsillectomy here after one week. So that's why you are referring to the general surgeon. You have to continue the medication till he sees the patient uh, and inform whether heavy bleeding occurs from the tonsils. Okay. Uh, advised admission after three days, continue gargling, rehabilitation for smoking. So you, you have to see the task response here. Let's go with this task, the date, the date of discharge, 20 February, 2019. Dr. Peter Frederick, the patient, the doctor's name, general surgeon, his designation, Blue Well Hospital is his hospital name. Reference, Mrs. Angelina Jolly. That's the patient's name, age 55. The purpose of this letter is to refer Mrs. Angelina Jolly. So we are writing the full name of the patient here, Mrs. Angelina Jolly who has been diagnosed with hemorrhagic tonsillitis. Now she, she, she has been diagnosed with the hemorrhagic tonsillitis. So she has one more problem there in the diagnostic section. You can see that rheumatoid arthritis. So, so, so I can include, because uh, I can include that rheumatoid arthritis who was diagnosed with hemorrhagic tonsillitis and rheumatoid arthritis. Because uh, uh, we are not going to mention um, about this rheumatoid arthritis again in this thing, because as you are writing to the general surgeon for uh, requesting the tonsillectomy, you are not going to write anything more regarding this rheumatoid arthritis except the symptoms. So <clears throat> we have added that here. So the diagnosis is two hemorrhagic tonsillitis and rheumatoid arthritis. She requires tonsillectomy and that's what she needs and has requested the same from your facility a week after his discharge today. So um, now she, she, uh, she requested the same what tonsillectomy from your facility. And when she needs a week after her discharge today, today she's going to get discharged. A week after her discharge, she requires tonsillectomy. And this is what she requested. As per this letter is written, as per her request. So actually you have to include that thing that is very important here and has requested the same from your facility. The letter is being written as per her request. This is a reference letter written to this particular doctor. And this is as per the request of Mrs. Angelina Jolly. She wants the surgery to be done at your facility. This has to be included there. Now, that's the main thing here. Now, when we go ahead with the paragraphs, you can see what are the presenting compliance. Mrs. Jolly presented to our care on 16th of this month. You have presented 16th of this month. So this month, we have already mentioned it's uh, it, uh, the today's date as February. So it is understood that 16th of this month is 16th February. So it is connected here, 16th of this month with extreme throat pain. So she had throat pain, dysphagia, yes, and bloody taste while swallowing saliva. These were the problems there. Now other presenting complaints included cough, severe joint pain, lack of appetite and constipation. 
So these were problems. We have grouped those compliance to two. One which we focused on the tonsillitis, another is the general symptoms what we have, arthritis and all, GI problems and all. Now on examination, she was febrile, hypertensive and showed signs of throat infection. So which were the signs of throat infection, enlarged tonsils, red eyes and coated tongue. So all these things, both the subjective and objective data are presented in the first particular paragraph. Now we have the confirmation uh, of infection um, from the investigation results that shows uh, ASO titer elevation, WBC elevation, and ESR elevation. You are writing to a general surgeon, so you don't require to write this thing in full form. So usually you uh, don't go with abbreviations in normal letters, but as you are writing to a general surgeon, he knows this terminology. So it's, it's now, there is no issue when if, if you write this abbreviations here. So that's it. Now, what happened during hospitalization? She was treated with uh, this particular medications, amoxicillin, thrice a day. She was given injection paracetamol. I have to say small letter. Yes. Injection paracetamol and betadine gargle. So the treatment was antibiotic therapy, fluid replacement therapy, betadine gargle, and uh, the antipyretic or analgesic therapy with paracetamol. <clears throat> but she reported a relief of, uh, of pain. Now we have. Um, the positive sign as uh, relief of pain and but you know that the general prognosis persisted therefore she was advised to have the surgical excision of tonsils now the problem persisted the symptoms the symptoms persisted uh the rest of the symptoms persisted, therefore she was advised to have the surgical excision of toxins. Now, we have did up to this point. Now we have to go ahead with the, uh, the social history. She's married and has two children. Now she's uh, having a history of smoking, ch chain smoker. So it, it, it's uh, something which is uh, mm, relevant when it comes to tonsillitis. And now she has, we have to inform the doctor that she's uh, having diabetes, hypothyroidism and hyperlipidemia. And we have to just mention some medications there, but we have mentioned that too. Yeah. So we have completed that thing too. Now, right now I have to say uh, what you, what the surgeon needs to go ahead. The surgeon should take over the management of Mrs. Jolly. So if it would be appreciated if you could take over the management of Mrs. Jolly. Okay. Uh, now I need uh, to add a particular thing here, advise the admission after three days. So today she is going to get discharged. The surgery is planned after a week. So she is advised to have the admission after three days. So I have to add that thing. It would be appreciated if you could take over the management of Mrs. Jolie. Uh, and provide her the best possible treatment to relieve her symptoms. She has been advised to get admitted at your hospital 
in three days and to report if bleeding exceeds. So this is what we have said. She has been advised to get admitted at your hospital in three days and to report if bleeding exceeds. So this is what in the discharge plan. Inform if heavy bleeding occurs, advise admission after three days. Now, uh, the rest of the things uh, we have entered there in the case notes that, that about betadine gargle, the medications and all it's going on. Um, so, <clears throat> uh, so that's it. And then uh, we have completed this thing. Uh, the purpose of the letter is clear. So you have referred Mrs. Jolly and what she needs is tonsillectomy and she is requesting the surgery from your facility a week after her surgery, after the discharge today. Now how she presented and how, uh, what, what, what was the treatment we gave at hospital in our hospital, that is the Royal Perth Hospital. And uh, inform her background information. So we have given that to you. And what you have to do, you have to take care of the management of Mrs. Jolly and provide the best possible treatment to relieve her symptoms. And she has been advised to get admitted at your hospital in three days and to report if bleeding exceeds. So this is what this thing is. If you have any further queries regarding Ms. Jolly's condition, please feel free to contact me. Your sincerely charged nurse for Perth Hospital. Okay, so that's it. And this is just an outline. You, you can make this letter better uh, if uh, you spend more time uh, and think on this thing. You might have some corrections there. Um, uh, but overall, this letter um, do good work and it fetches you good score. Thank you.